Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. That is Jack. I am Connor. This is the 45 with our look back at week, match week three. We took a look at five matches coming into the weekend. We're going to take a look at those exact same five matches coming out of the weekend, starting with Liverpool party of one. Uh, the Unbearables looked very, very good. They had an early stake from Robertson, but he corrected that later uh, on his goal. Liverpool take it 3-1. Arsenal sitting on six points from three. Liverpool second on goal difference. Arsenal looked good, but Liverpool just looked great. Better. I mean, the, yeah. outside of that mistake. Liverpool played the best football they've played all year. Against Leeds, that was an open, beautiful, chaotic match. Against Chelsea, they just dominated the ball when they were when Chelsea were down to 10 men. Against Arsenal, against a fully equipped, very good defensive side, they were methodical. They were very, very good in front of goal. And that was without Thiago Alcantara, their best midfielder, one of their best players, who has COVID-19 currently. Um I think that Liverpool, really, this is a good building block for them, able to get this, I think, probably the best win of the year um, and to stay perfect in the Premier League, obviously. And for Arsenal, still a ways off from where they want to be in terms of recruitment as well as on the field. So Arsenal next up against Sheffield United. Look, Liverpool will look to continue that form uh, against Villa, who will prove to be a different side than they were last year. Next up, a tale of two cities, Manchester City home to Leicester City. Man City giving away three penalties, exposed on the counter, 71%, 71% possession, yet mm -hmm. outshot 7-5. to five. Leicester looks terrible in Project Restart, off to an absolute tear thus far mm -hmm. in the Premier League, sitting top of the league on goal difference. Yeah, they're scoring goals for fun, and even in this match when they didn't possess much of the ball, they were still able to be clinical and very effective going forward. And this was, this was the, I think, best example of where Guardiola's football can fail – where they have a lot of the ball, they just can't generate chances. Uh, Leicester taking seven shots, all seven of them went on target, versus City had a lot more shots, up to 16, but only five of them went on target, as you mentioned. So they've got to be more clinical. Have to first goal for Sheffield United, first point, not to be. 1-0 uh, at first blush looked like a strange result coming out of this, knowing how high-flying leads have mm -hmm. been, but... Even though Sheffield were depleted at the back, they had enough defensively to hold leads to just one goal. Sheffield can't score. We talked about this in the in the yeah. pre-mat in the preseason. Burke and McGoldrick, they can be inventive at times, but there's no clear front man. I don't know how mm -hmm. concerned Chris Wilder should be at this point. Yeah, I think that only three matches in, there's no need to panic just yet, and there's still a few more days of the transfer window. I hope they address it, try and sign someone up front to offer competition and offer a variance of options up there. Versus Leeds, this was, I think, one of their better performances of the season. Finally able to keep a clean sheet, and you get that late goal to get the points. They're doing very well. Um, not a side that's relegation-threatened, but one that obviously had to perform well, considering how competitive the Premier League is. And Sheffield United, I think they're very good defensively still. That's not going to change. But you got to put some goals in. Zero from three is unacceptable and reflects in the fact that you haven't been able to keep a clean sheet yet. So when you can't score, you can't keep a clean sheet, it's a pretty good recipe for being 100%. To get zero points. Sheffield doesn't get any easier for them. 19th place. Next up at Arsenal Leeds. Next up against City. That will probably be a 7-7 match. That's what we were talking about last time out. Very exciting. Uh, Brighton and Manchester United. Uh, Brighton off the post five times. And then VAR. <laughs> Clearly Mopay's arm is where it doesn't belong, but uh, was, yeah. a penalty after the whistle was just was a gut-wrenching end for Brighton, who looked very, very good yeah. in this match. I think I think Brighton definitely deserves to take at least a point from this match. They outplay Manchester United. But as Bruno Fernandes in a very uh, very tongue-in-cheek way set up the match, the goal isn't to shoot and hit the post, the goal is to score. And they did that more than Brighton did, and they got three points. Well, technically, United, Brighton got the own goal by dunk, so they, tec they actually Technically. <laughs> but I think for Manchester United, got to be a wake-up call. For Brighton, also got to be a wake-up call. Finish your chances, finish your dinner, and you win that match. Manchester United, you allow that many chances to a Liverpool, a Manchester City, aside with better, higher-quality finishers than Brighton, you're going to get massacred. you got to step it up. Brighton, 12th next at Everton, which will not be easy. Man United next against Spurs. Finally, Palace and Everton. Uh... Everton really caught a break in this one. Palace didn't look great, but Everton mm -hmm. with that VAR call, which will no longer be allowed. Uh, referees are going to be asked to be more, uh, give more latitude on the unnaturally large mm -hmm. language. Uh, anything that, that IFAB put out there, anything that is above the head will continue to be called. But if you are in more of a natural defensive stance, they're going to be more, there's going to be more latitude in that natural silhouette. Yeah. 
I, I again, I felt bad for Palace. They probably deserve uh, a draw here, but Everton I think are really good. Everton created a, a few good chances. I think that the big thing I took from this match was not that it was kind of boring, but that Everton were just it. It was an effective result. You got They're points. metronomic. Yeah, exactly, and that's not something we've seen from Everton in a very, very long time. Palace, I think they've shown better signs than we expected from them. Maybe survival is a lot easier. You have them going down. I had them, I believe, in as low as seventeenth, maybe. Um, so I did not believe have much faith in them. Um, neither of us did really. So no, I'm they not are, looking very smart on this at all. Right now. <laughs> neither of us were looking smart on that one. But we weren't alone. Uh, we were not alone. Know, we a lot of alone. people out there did not have a lot of faith. But Hodgson is is working a little bit of magic. Palace sitting sixth, next at Chelsea. Everton third place, uh, next home to Brighton. That'll do it for us for week three. Look back. Please do subscribe, comment, like, all that. Look for us on the Twitter at The45. Take care now.